But why don't we concentrate on that instead of lowering speed limits and fining people? The Germans don't have speed kills, possibly because the German word for speeding is so long that it won't fit on the screen of a German newscast. The German road safety program is called Hunter vom Gas, which literally translates to down from the gas. I'll assume this isn't a fart joke or a Hitler reference, though with the Germans you're never quite sure. Their campaign targets all types of bad driving, and the only mention of inappropriate speed I could find is buried. My argument rests on two points. Point one. The roads are safest when everyone's traveling at the same speed, and in the same direction, and paying attention. Point two. This is from a report on BC speed limits prepared for the BC Ministry of Transportation by two, probably not PE teachers, and whatever an EIT is. The majority of motorists drive at a speed they consider reasonable and safe for road, traffic, and environmental conditions. Posted limits, which are set higher or lower than dictated by roadway and traffic conditions, are ignored by the majority of motorists. This relates to something called the Solomon Curve, which basically says that if traffic's flowing at a certain speed, the farther from the average a vehicle is traveling, the more dangerous it is. So, if the speed limit is below the upper limit of the safe majority, the people who do the speed limit become hazards to themselves and others. Or, in other words, Have you ever noticed when you're driving that anyone who's driving slower than you is an idiot? And anyone driving faster than you is a maniac! When speed limits are too low, you get a lot of tension on the road. For example, the passing lane. Most places have get-out-of-the-left-lane laws, but what if the speed limits are too low? You have to be passing on the left, but you also have to obey the law, and it ends up being impossible to legally pass. Take this example. There's a vehicle on the left lane holding up traffic at 120 in a 100 zone. He's speeding, impeding traffic, and not moving out of the lane. And it's a cop. You know, if you're in a fully marked police car, you could at least pretend the law applied to you as well. But where do the current speed limits come from? Speed limits in North America were mostly set back in the day when cars had terrible handling, braking, and fuel mileage, and really liked to explode. But even though modern cars are much safer, speed limits generally haven't changed, and many are even lower. Why? As it turns out, governments and insurance companies make money from traffic fines. A lot of money and they've gotten quite used to it over time. Also, no matter where you raise a speed limit, you'll have people like this. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? As an example, in Winnipeg, the engineers went to the city and said, hey, look, you should raise the speed limit along whatever stretch of road. And the city took the recommendation off their website, ignored it, and continued ticketing people. Still think speeders deserve what they get? There are two parties other than the government to blame here, the police and the media. Let's start with the fuzz. If you actually want people to slow down, well, let's let Simon Baker explain it. Speed traps, legalized extortion. You want people to slow down? Park out in the open, where they can see you. But no, you lay in wait like thieves in the night. You will pay the ticket today. I'm not going to pay it. I Jane, won't pay it. I'm stop. not paying it. Extortionist. But when the cops are visible, people do slow down, but you don't make any money. Foster, how many tickets did you issue last week? Uh, I don't have my figures here in front of me. I, Three. I, I can't make them speed. Try hiding. And grow a goddamn mustache, why don't hey, you? Hey, I haven't shaved in two weeks. Now, the media. The media can screw things up two ways here. First, they just automatically blame speed. And second, they get facts wrong. For example, if you have a story that contains... Only at this point, we are not ruling out either alcohol or uh, speed as factors. You can't start your newscast with The deadly result of four young men in a car going too fast. Abbotsford police are trying to determine if alcohol was also involved. You do realize we can rewind TV now, right? And where did you get it as fact that they were going too fast? Are you sure it was the police? Are you sure it wasn't nothing? Oh yeah. Next story. The Lions Gate was closed for seven hours when a speeding car spun out of control and slammed into a transit bus. Brian Coxford has more. Curb lane 75, center lane white car 88. That's our record, 91. Everybody's been speeding. We haven't seen a single person not, that was doing the speed limit here. Police radar couldn't track any drivers except a bus that were doing the speed limit. Okay, let me stop you right there. I assume that in order to be a traffic cop and a reporter, you need to be able to both count and read, at the same time, consistently. 
So, when you point us to a yellow sign, you have to know that yellow signs are advisory speeds in higher speed limit areas. Speed limits are white, like this one seen here a few seconds earlier in your story. Now, excessive speed in BC is more than 40 over the limit, and this sign says 60. So when Sergeant Kremski says... 91, so that's an excessive there. He could get towed for seven days, impounded for seven days, and a $368 fine for that. It says several things. One, it looks like you would have illegally seized someone's car. Even if the limit is 50, your true speed laser unit isn't accurate enough for you to be sure he was excessively speeding, so you'd be charging him with something that you're not sure he's guilty of. And it's situations like this that are the number one argument against immediate roadside impoundments. Two, nobody who worked on this story paid any attention to the facts. Three, the comps are likening the ordinary safe actions of everyday drivers, like this guy doing 69, giggity giggity, with the one idiot that loses control at night and slams into a bus. And the media are perfectly happy to parrot that narrative without doing a shred of investigative journalism or fact-checking on their own. What's worse, the cop's narrative at the end now just looks terribly contrived. They show up on a Sunday morning to tell them that their 18-year-old son is dead. Something of that sort. I've done that, and it, it, uh, it rips your heart out. You never forget it.